Welcome back. Now, in a few moments, before we welcome our keynote speaker, we're going to show you a film, just a short one, a story of one lady, Galina, who lives alone in Dnipro, in Ukraine. One lady whose story is so symptomatic of the 19,000 older Jews supported by this organization last year. It is impossible to separate Galina from the social, cultural context that she lives within, where state care and support are extremely underdeveloped. Many live below the poverty line. It wasn't a foregone conclusion that she'd end up in this situation. So many other older people, like Galina, grew up thinking that the Soviet system would protect them until their dying day. But, as we know, the system collapsed. Savings and pensions devalued and lost. Multiple economic downturns followed alongside those protracted territorial conflicts that you were seeing in the earlier films. That's why so many deeply professional people, engineers, economists, even rocket scientists, many of them women, have been reduced to depending on charitable handouts to get by from day to day. And that's why World Jewish Relief, through its network of local partner organizations, has had to step in to provide the basic social welfare structure that we all take for granted living here. This lack of state support has been compounded by a lack of social networks, I mean in their more traditional form, leading to extreme loneliness, to isolation. In the early 90s, as the Iron Curtain fell, young Jewish leaders, entrepreneurs, activists, and community champions moved to Israel, the US, and Europe. Many left their parents and their grandparents behind. This group of older people didn't have the physical or the emotional wherewithal to leave the only place that many of them had ever called home. For people like Galina, not, not only would they never move abroad, many are barely able to move beyond the front door. Many live in Khrushchevkas, prefabricated concrete blocks that you will see, you will recognize, named after the Soviet leader who initiated their mass production in the 1950s, which were designed to solve a housing crisis. The scale and rapidity of construction was celebrated internationally at the time. Unfortunately, unsurprisingly, they have outlasted their 25-year shelf life. Today, they leave inhabitants living in appalling disrepair. I do wish one could be more optimistic about life in Ukraine today, but the country remains in a state of active conflict with Russia. 10,000 lives are lost in the fighting, a million people displaced. Tensions remain high following recent skirmishes. Civilians bear the brunt of this conflict in economic and in psychological terms. Perhaps some of you may recall living in a context of war. Certainly for our older clients, it's yet another burden for them to bear. As I said at the beginning, tonight's theme is saving lives, and to me, saving lives doesn't need to be delivering life support or first aid, but I know from my own experience of World Jewish Relief's work, and particularly from one individual that we met called Koba, that saving lives can come in many forms, isolated, living up a dirt track on his own with no running water in a town in rural Georgia. It was so typical of the situation that I've described, a man who's built a lifetime of intelligence, of, of thought, but has no one really to share it with. Koba's 15 years younger than my mum, who came on the trip with us. And when the two met, no one could really tell that there was any age gap at all. I remember so distinctly arriving at that house. We could see the house from the road. Long before we got there, it was isolated, it was on its own. And he showed off the house with such pride. And he took us in all the rooms. They were all the same. They were empty. There was nothing there. It was a shack. It was bare of furniture. It was freezing in the winter and boiling in the summer. But he was so proud of what he had, courtesy of World Jewish Relief. And I remember him taking my palm. And he offered to read my fortune. And he held my hand and we sat there on his bed. It was actually one of the saddest moments of that whole trip for reasons I can't entirely fathom. But perhaps it was because as he looked at my hand, I had that sense he was quite literally looking for a lifeline. And in the years since, and I don't actually remember what he told me about my fortune then or what he said was gonna happen, but. The reverse has happened. My mind has repeatedly returned to Cobra and his own fortune. I wonder where his lifeline is now and how he's doing. The, the chink of light 
in his life, the one that kept him going, is the basic support, the winter relief, the food, the medicines given by World Jewish Relief, or should that be given by you? It keeps him going, knowing that there are people from a town thousands of miles away thinking of him in his shack in Georgia. For the Cobras, for the Galenas of this world, World Jewish Relief is more than just a lifeline. It is truly life-saving. Дыхнула, пар идет, я включаю обогреватель. Это я так говорю на часе. Я, конечно, на целый день это очень дорого. Холодно, сыро. Ну, то, что нет окон, это темно, заходишь как в подвал. Я комнатой пользовалась сугубо для сна. Да нет никаких моментов, все время одна. У меня туалет был на улице. Это очень тяжело. Очень тяжело. Утеплят вход, сделают новую дверь, окно пробьют, чтобы свет проходил сюда, чтобы я могла днем пользоваться комнатой. И теплее будет. Это вообще... Это очень хорошее мероприятие. Там приносят что-нибудь перекусить. Делимся между собой. Мне там замечательно. Дружим между собой и так. Я благодарна лондонцам. Спасибо вам большое. Спасибо. Last year, thanks to you, World Jewish Relief helped 19,000 Galinas in seven countries, heating their homes, repairing their toilets, connecting them to the Jewish community, sending in home care workers, giving them glasses, so much more. But it's not only individuals who are helped. World Jewish Relief also helps to rebuild Jewish communities, many of them having spent years stagnating in the hope that they will become self-sufficient and grow and flourish. One such community has been an extraordinary success and that's one in Krakow, Poland, where World Jewish Relief built a Jewish community center in the heart of Kazimierz, only 40 miles from Auschwitz. The success of the JCC in Krakow is largely due to the dynamic and visionary leadership of its executive director, Jonathan Ornstein, who I would now very much like to welcome to the stage. Please give a warm welcome to our Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> 